please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or med scholarships 2020. This problem is from the 2020 physics questionnaire for the undergraduate scholarships. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. Here we will answer questions 1 and 2 for problem 3. And the problem reads, as shown in figure 3, object A of mass M is moving with speed B on a frictionless surface. Object B of mass 3M is at rest and attached to the end of a spring with spring constant K. The other end of the spring is fixed to a wall. Object A and B and the spring are aligned on a straight line. At time t equals zero, object A hits object B elastically. Now we need to find the velocity of object A after the collision, and also the velocity of object B after the collision. Two key ideas are relevant in this problem. First is the conservation of momentum that relates the momentum before and after any collision, or in fact, any non-collision events too. So what that says is that the sum of the momentum of the first of the first object and the second object is the same before and after the collision. The momentum is just the product of the mass and the speed. So for for object A, for example, that would be the mass m1 and its velocity or speed, and for Object B, that would be its mass and its speed. And all these before the collision and after the collision, we do the same. Mass times the speed after the collision. Mass times the speed after the collision. And the other relevant idea is the idea of an elastic collision. An elastic collision is one such that the kinetic energy is conserved. So the sum of the kinetic energies of object 1 or object A and that of object B before the collision must be equal to the sum of the kinetic energies after the collision. Now, we need these two equations because we are looking for two unknowns. The two unknowns are the, are the speeds after the collision, so that's V1 and V2. Now that we have these relationships pinned down, we just need to substitute the values. So for object A, the mass is m. For object B, the mass is 3m. Before the collision, the speed of object A is v, and the speed of object B is just 0 because it's at rest. Now we're looking for their speeds v1 prime and v2 prime after the collision. So here we just used the conservation of momentum. So we just replaced the variables here. And so we get this equation here. And now we get v, v1 in terms of v2. And now we also use the second equation. Again, the kinetic energy is just one half the mass times the square of the speed. So we replace the variables with these ones here. And so we obtain this relationship. Again, we have V in terms, or rather we have V1 and V2, and they are related by this equation through V, which is the speed of object A before the collision. Here we just need to solve the simultaneous equations that we obtained. So again, we write the equations that we obtained, this and this. And now we notice that v1 prime here is expressed in terms of v2 prime so we can substitute we can substitute this expression into here and so if we do that we replace the v1 prime with this bit here and if we just go on with that we obtain this so we just copied this side and this bit and this is just expanded so that's just the square of a binomial and then we simplify this equation a little bit more so canceling the v squared for example and combining the v2 prime squareds that's 9 plus 3 12 and 
and then we get this simpler equation. Now we can even cancel the sixes and factor out the v2 prime. And so we get zero equals v2 prime times two v sub two prime minus v. And that gives us two possible values for v sub two prime. One is v sub two prime equals zero. And if this is the case, we use this to get v1 prime. And we see that, so we substitute zero here. So we see that v1 prime is just equal to v. Now, that's one case. However, if you think about that, you have a ball that is the v1 prime that continues to move at the same speed v. So when they collide, object A continues to move at speed v as if this object here was just a ghost. And in fact, it says here that v2 prime remains at rest because the the v2 prime is zero, so object B rather remains at rest. So it's like they collided, this remained at rest, and object A just moved forward at the same speed. So again, object B is like a ghost. And that's clearly not physical. So this is probably not the answer we're looking for. So we look at the other solution. So for this bit here. So the other solution is such that 2v2 prime minus v equals zero. And if we solve that, we get v2 prime equals one half v. And if we have this, we can use this again to obtain v1 prime equals negative one half v. And this is more intuitive because v2 prime has has a has a speed or is equal to one half of v. So that means this object b moves forward in the same direction as the original direction of object A, and it moves at half the original speed of object A. And object A now, so V1 prime is the speed of, of object A after the collision, it now has a different direction. So it bounces off object B, and its speed is now one half its original speed. Therefore, the answer we're looking for for problem one, which is the velocity of object A after the collision, so that's V1 prime, so that's negative one half V. And for object B, that's one half V, so that's V2 prime. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!